Okay, so we're going to continue on here with part three of the snowshoe harness making. Alrighty, so we've got the areas we want our, these are the two sides that we've cleaned. Now I've got my contact cement. I like the ones with the brushes attached, so now you want to put a good batch of this stuff on here. You got to make sure it covers the, it's a big enough circle that it covers your whole patch. You don't want your patch sticking out of the glue because that's a spot for it to be, get loose, you know what I mean? Contact cement is kind of a tricky thing to work with because it's, if you've never used it before, you know, or you need to have it, you know, normal glue, you'd think, well, you've got to have it wet and get those two pieces together. But contact cement has to be dry on both parts before you put it together for it to properly seal. And these things are a pain in my butt. We got her. Okay, so there's that one. That one was easy. There's number two. Number three. Number four. Now we do the same thing with these ones. We completely cover them, coat them in a, a layer of the contact cement. And it's kind of important to have it evenly coated so that it dries you know, pretty much everywhere over the patch at the same time. right out to the edges. Like so. Oh, and uh, I gotta give credit where credit is due. This is not my idea. A fella who was from Sault Ste. Marie named Paul Mora, way back when I was doing mining work. He was our boss on a couple of mining contracts, prospecting contracts we had. And it was him that showed me how to do these things. So Now that was back when I was mid-twenties, I guess. And... Uh, you know, Paul was probably 60 back then, so I'm not even sure if Paul is still alive, but if he, he is, and anybody knows him down in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, tell him I said hi. Tell you a funny story there when we're on that uh, 
that job up uh, close to Beardmore, between Beardmore and Jelton, or Geraldton. We uh, were out in the bush all day, and then we're staying at a, a lodge that was closed down for the winter, but the guys had opened it up so we could have a, a cabin to stay instead of staying in tents. And we were on the way back one day, and my buddy Bill rolled his truck. So the other guys went on to camp, and I stayed with Bill to wait for a tow truck to get it flipped back over. And lo and behold, we finally got it flipped over. When we got to camp, Bill had been uh, Anyways, we got back to camp and they everybody had already eaten supper. And, you know, those guys who have read any of the stories or know, know you, you don't get between me and food when we're, when I'm hungry. So, anyways, we got back to camp and there was a, a nice a pan of roast chicken. Everybody had already eaten and there was five pieces of chicken left on this, on this pan. And now, you got to remember, Bill was my best friend at the time in White River and so we each grabbed two pieces of chicken and then Bill grabbed the third uh, the third and his third and the last piece that was on the, the pan real fast and I was like yeah right I'm gonna take half that chicken there's no way you're getting more than me so I grabbed it off his plate then he grabbed it back off my plate and at this point it was just a pretty much a mussy mushed up piece of crap. But before you know it, the two of us are rolling around on the floor fighting over this piece of chicken. And the other guys in the crew and the boss are just sitting at the table staring at us and kind of uh, like, oh, what the hell is going on? And finally, this chicken, you know, we broke, a, broke up and this chicken piece is just laying there. So I just grabbed it and threw it at him and said, here, you can have the piece of chicken. Paul Mora, our boss, gets up, goes over, opens the oven, and there's another whole pan with like 30 pieces of chicken sitting on it. Um, yeah, we felt kind of stupid for a while there, but anyways, Paul's the guy that um, showed me how to make this here set of snowshoe harnesses, and uh, we used them the whole that whole contract. We were there for a month and a half snowshoeing. You know, I don't know, oh, 10, 15 miles a day. And, uh, you know, they, they worked really well. They're uh, not one that I ever, like when I was doing my, my trapping and stuff, I used my bait harnesses all the time. These ones were not something, uh, you know, these were, cause, because the co company was, supplying the snowshoes and harnesses you know we weren't going to use our own snowshoes and and wear them out for the mining work so they they would buy us snowshoes and and the, you know supply the harness and stuff and these things worked worked very well easy super easy to put on and uh and get off and yeah like i said but anyways i just wanted to give credit where credit is due so here we go now you see the this contact cement dries pretty quick. You can see I'm still leaving fingerprints so it's still not quite dry enough but it's not sticking to my hand anymore and on here the same thing so you're supposed to wait till it's dry to the touch and that to me means it's dry to the touch so we're gonna go like this. so press the center of the thing down so that there's no bubbles push her down so it's good contact everywhere and then we'll put some weight on it after and then that plastic will peel off
after it's all dry. And what we're going to do here afterwards is we're going to trim the toe off to where we want so it's not excess flopping around and we will drill two holes in each of these patches about an inch apart or an inch and a half apart and that's where our lamp wick will go through and attach fasten onto the snowshoes okay so that's that step now what I'm going to do is put a board across there with some weight on it like so sort of deal. All right, so that's step three finished. Now I'm gonna um, we'll get that's got to take it'll be tomorrow. I'll uh, finish off step number four. but for right now I I'm going to do some skinning. Alrighty. See you tomorrow. For okay guys, so here we're in the fourth and last step of our snowshoe harnesses. So you've got your patches put on there now, like so. And now this next step is we're going to drill the holes where the, uh, the binding is going to go through your your snowshoe. So what you do here, you, you put it on the boots that you normally use and you know because this is going to vary a little bit depending on what size of boot you wear. Now my size 13 big clod hoppers. So but you want the the uh, tie down which is for me is going to be the lamp wick um, right down kind of beside the boot. So like I position these here for that reason about the middle of these patches okay so what you do you just kind of put a little bit of pressure down and it should feel right about at the edge of your toes where you want them so that when you put your foot in there those strappings are holding your foot from sliding all the way through okay so it's going to be in the middle of these patches I'm just using a, this is a, a half inch drill bit and it's going to be about an inch of space between the two holes. Now you see I've, I'm on my beaver stretcher here so I'll just use a backup board for yeah drilling rubber is just priceless. There we go. The next hole. Okay, and on the other one, same thing. Hope I don't break or blow break here because in my shed I don't have the electrician come in yet to put in the hydro, and all I've got is a, an extension cord running from the house. So I've got these lights, the freezer running off it and now this drill and you can see how the lights dim every time I hit the drill so just watch it doesn't do that okay, it's through there now all 
right, so that's the one. Now the same thing here. Another good way to do this is if you can heat up something really hot about that size half inch it actually works better and melt a hole through it because when you melt the hole that stops any running in the rubber. Alright, so now I'm just going to put it on one of the shoes for now. I'm going to put these on my big pair of bear shoes. And you're going to want at least 12 inches of lamp wick, but I'm going to cut 14 just to be sure. Remember, once again, it's the same thing. Cut it once, it was too short. Cut it again, it was still too short. So you need two pieces for each shoe, obviously. Let's do the two for now. So now you're going to put your, your lamp wick through the hole. You're going right through here. If you go in here, you're going to be too narrow for your foot. So you're in here and back up this side here. And then back through the other hole in your shoe. I mean, that's pretty common sense. Now here's where you're going to have to... Uh, just figure out before you tie it. You have to get your boot in there and see how tight you want it to be. So we'll get these things through here. Like I said, you're gonna you get your boot position in here, right where it wants to be, and then you pull this down tight enough that it'll have some pressure on it, and you are just basically tying this in a knot. Yeah, see, lucky I did 14 inches because. With these big clod hopper boots, 12 would not have been long enough. Alrighty, so now you've got your shoe on here. You see how that pivots very nicely? got my foot all the way up and the tail of my shoe never comes off. Now this here you can trim off if you want. It's not necessary though. There's a, no real reason for it to be on there. But So what I'm going to do now is just I'll take the camera off here. And I'll take the boot out. Show you how easy it is to get your boot in there. Get this boot on in here. OK. 
Okay. Got your snowshoe on the ground, sitting there like so. Put your foot in backwards. Just pop it around like so, and it's on there. See? Works great. And you just walk like that forever. And like I said, they last up really well. And to take them off, Twist your foot around that way. Oh, I guess you didn't really see that. I didn't have that thing in proper angle just for you to see it. But anyway, you just obviously reverse the putting it on thing. So reverse your foot, pull back, twist your toe around, pull your heel out. That's fast and easy. Alrighty, got some skinning to do. So, that's your snowshoe harnesses, homemade, for about $5. Alrighty, give them a whirl, they work out pretty good. Thanks, see you later. Well guys, and one other thing I wanted to mention too, the lamp wick. Um, the reason we use it for attaching harnesses is it's extremely light, extremely strong, and durable. It lasts oh, for hundreds of miles walking in shoes before it breaks. And all you have to do is carry two 14 inch pieces with you in your pocket. I used to carry them all the time, never went anywhere without them. And you know, one of them finally breaks, you just uh, take one out of your pocket retie your shoes on and keep going it takes five minutes so that's why we use that um, you know very very durable like I said hundreds of miles you can cover in uh, one use or like one piece of lamp with holding your shoes on alrighty okay bye